There you go. Time now is 8.43. Now, she won our hearts as the laugh out loud bubble in Abfab. But a chance discovery on the BBC programme, Who Do You Think You Are? Send the actress Jane Horrocks down an altogether more serious path. The Lancashire cotton famine affected so many in the north of England, including Jane's own ancestors, and gave her the inspiration to create a new production with the musician Stephen Mallard. And they both join us now. Very morning. good morning to morning. you. Morning. So you were inspired, Jane, by a look back at your own family. Is that, is that what happened? Um, yes, and when I did Who Do You Think You Are, uh, uh, we touched on this period of Lancashire history, the Lancashire Cotton Famine, or Cotton Panic, as it's also known as. And uh, I thought, what an amazing piece of history, because it's such an in international story. And I, I, I was just very surprised that a, a drama hadn't been made about it, or that other people didn't seem to know about it either. Uh, so it kind of stayed with me for... Well, I mean, I did that programme in 2005, so it kind of stayed with me. And then uh, um, I did um, a music show last year at the Young Vic, which inspired me to kind of do another collaboration. And I, I'd always wanted to do this thing about cotton. I, I didn't, when I say thing, because I didn't know what it was going to be about cotton, the cotton famine. And um, approached Stephen, who I'd got to know, uh, since doing the show at the Young Vic and asked him whether he would be involved with his band Wrangler um, to make a kind of an industrial sort of, well, it's a gig. Uh, very difficult to describe, actually. Oh, God, give it, well, maybe, Stephen, <laughs> give it your best shot. It's, what is actually, it? it's the hardest question because we, do, we don't really know how to describe it. There's not really anything like it. It is a gig. I mean, people come to it as a gig and it's a music thing. So it's uh, not a musical... That no, it's not, to, I mean, that, it's kind of that's a no no really for us. It's not really something that I kind of really understand anyway, the musical thing. It's just, but there's a narrative, and music tells us, tells a story. So I was, you know, obviously knowing Jane, I was fascinated by the story. Did you know much about the cotton panic or the cotton famine? I knew before? about it, but from a different context, because I'd heard about it through uh, Black History Month, so I knew about it from that. From that angle. Can you that. explain it? Because we haven't yet explained um, what it is. Just very briefly to our viewers. Well, I mean, it's about it's about when uh, during the American Civil War, and obviously most of the most of the cotton uh, was coming from America to to the Lancashire sort of textile mills, and uh, there was an embargo, uh, and obviously the cotton wasn't coming out. But the the Manchester workers did come out in sympathy and support. Eventually, so obviously it's not. A, you know, it wasn't wholehearted. There was there was debate and discussion about it, but they did and agreed at Free Trade Hall to come out in support of the of the the abolitionists, and so it's part of that story. But as a result of supporting the the, the abolitionists, it led to massive hardship, mm. deprivation, displacement, deaths, and you know, it, so it had a massive impact on Lancashire, and it was those events of the side. Now, that did it. I think that was was that a glimpse of the rehearsals we saw mm. a moment ago? Was that you with a megaphone? Yes. <laughs> what's that, what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just me being cocky. Am am <laughs> amplification needed. Yes. Is that but so? It's actually talks to me through a megaphone. <laughs> Gets shouts at me and gets me to do things. Well, during the show, is that <laughs> yeah, built all in? Yeah, all of this. She shouts at the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do this now. Yeah. It sounds like it's kind of what's the word for it? A bit deconstructed. Is that would that be a that, re that reasonable be. phrase? Mm. Yeah, and also the, a, a lot of it is done in film. Uh, I mean, myself and Phil and, and Ben, the band, the music we are a band, but uh, a lot of it's done with film. We work with director Chris Turner, so. Uh, and so it's it's quite an, it's quite a kind of immersive, interesting sort mm. of space. It's supposed to be experience. We don't. It's not a history lesson, but it's all. It's kind of like multimedia, isn't it? Yeah, really, yeah. Uh, it's got it's got everything going on. Really, to tell the story. Yeah. Um, Feels like um, you've had free reign at the, over this, and it's you thought of something. You thought I don't have to fit in any box here. I can just do exactly what I like. And I ask this because we introduced you as Bubble. Mm -hmm. um, from Abfab and lots of people know you on the screen and from Little Voice, la la la. Mm. Is that has that is that behind you now? Television is this is it all now about? I'm just going to do what takes my fancy. Um, it certainly interests me more um, to do this sort of work. Collaboration, I, I really love, and we've all selected different people from our worlds to be part of this show, uh, from the lighting to the designer to the. Um, uh, the video projection stuff. So it's 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 great actually to have that sort of free reign to be able to do that. Um, I just I, I, creatively, I just find it much more satisfying to do rather than somebody else being in control. 
Unfortunately, John McGrath, the, uh, the Manchester International Festival, agreed to put this show on. So it's, you know, I have to say thanks to them for, for agreeing, you know, when Stephen and, um, and Nick Vivian, the writer, and, and I went to see John, he did actually, you know, he, he was kind of had faith in the project enough to say, yes, you can do it. We only met him in December. <laughs> So it's been a very quick process. Yeah. But, um, I dare say that there are, are there kind of nuances that, to do with hard times then, and you think of austerity now, and you know the, the you think of food banks. Are, are there parallels? Do you think that that give it a particular resonance now? Yeah, I mean it's a perennial story. It's an endu they're enduring stories of people and and communities who actually are drawn together because of events that are outside their control and in international events and this is an example of that and connection between people and communities uh, so it, it is an enduring story and it's very relevant you know about displacement about hardship and so but it's also an uplifting part in the sense that it's about how communities do support each other so famously in who do you think you are Jane everyone cries I, I didn't see yours did did it end in I did saw, it, didn't want to cry did it end in tears it, they, they did make me cry and actually it was that point where I, I found out that one of my ancestors a very you know um, a baby did die in the cotton famine so it was I think that's why you know this story I mean, it did resonate with me because um, I'm doing this now, but yes, I didn't want to cry. <laughs> so everyone says it, don't they? Always they do. Say, oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And then something <laughs> yes. is a trigger somewhere along the line, uh, along mm. the way. Mm. Uh, love to see you both here this morning. Thank you very Thank much you. for Thank coming you. in. Thank you. Cotton Panic begins this Saturday. Good luck. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. So we've been spending quite a lot of the morning at Wimbledon this morning. Sal's been there with the sport. Carol is also there this morning. And we're told, Sal, Sal told us there was at least one flying ant today. 